Okay, let's get started. Okay, so first off, welcome, welcome, and thank you all for joining us today on our virtual visit of UC Berkeley. Really appreciate you all taking your time to come out and join us for today's tour. Uh, a couple things about myself. I am Albert. I'll be today's moderator. So a couple things about myself. Uh, I'm from San Francisco, California, so right across the bay from Berkeley. My pronouns are he, him, and his, and I'm a computer science and cognitive science major. Okay, so for some quick housekeeping. For today's tour, we'll be starting with a 45 minute presentation where keep in mind that the chat function is disabled. So if you have any questions, then feel free to go ahead and ask those in the Q&A function down below. In addition, there will be periodically some polls that will pop up on your screen. Please make sure to go ahead and answer those because we want to learn just a little bit about who is joining us today. And if you happen to miss anything, then different versions are recorded and available on our website. Also, please do keep in mind that today's presenters will be providing a campus overview from the student perspective. So uh, today's presenters are not representatives of the admissions or financial aid departments. So if you have any more specific questions at those areas, then feel free to direct those to those specific departments. In addition, there is a separate admissions presentation if you have anything specific for admissions. And finally, we'll be ending with a Q&A where we'll go ahead and answer some of your questions live. And with that, let me pass it off to our ambassadors for today, Beatrice and Ryan. Hello, everyone. My name is Beatrice, and I'm so excited to welcome you to UC Berkeley today. My pronouns are she, her, and hers, and I'm originally from Oakland, California, right next to our lovely mm -hmm. campus in Berkeley. I'm a sophomore. I just started my sophomore year. And I'm still undecided in my major, but my current plan is to double major in human geography and political economy, both of which are somewhat social sciences majors, pretty unique to Berkeley. Um, and other than being a campus ambassador, I'm involved in the Daily Californian, which is our university's independent student run newspaper. And I'm an editor of the blog section there. And I'm also involved in DanceWorks, which is one of many dance organizations on our campus. Hi, everyone. My name is Ryan. Um, I use she, her pronouns. Uh, I'm originally from Culver City, California, which is down in Los Angeles. I am just kicking off my junior year, and I'm very excited. Um, and I'm studying neurobiology, and my goal is to also do minors in English and chemistry. Uh, and here on campus, I'm involved in residential life. I'm an RA. I'm a resident assistant in residence halls. Um, I also do internships with our student health center, and I do club sports. All right. Sorry about that. Just a few technical difficulties. So we're going to get started with our welcome to UC Berkeley. Um, I apologize again for the Zoom difficulties. You'll see here a poll popping up. We just want to know who you are um, so that we know who we're talking to today. And here on this slide, you'll see a general overview of our campus. In the center, you'll see our Campanile. That's our clock and bell tower. You can see it from almost anywhere in the Bay Area on a clear day, which is super cool just to have that landmark of our campus. And then you'll see in the top left some drone footage of that. Um, in the bottom right, you'll see that in 2018, we celebrated 150 years of light, 150 years of UC Berkeley, and you'll see in the bottom left that this year we're actually celebrating 150 years of women at Berkeley, which means that women were admitted to Berkeley just two years after our university was founded and before they even had the right to vote in this country. So there's a lot of history on our campus that we'll get into later. And I see with our poll results, we have a good mix of high school seniors and juniors. So that's super exciting. We're excited to have you with us today. Next, we'll get into the agenda of our virtual visit. So we will be covering a lot in these next 45 minutes. Um, we'll start with an overview of Berkeley, moving into academics, housing and dining, health and safety, student resources, student life, athletics, libraries and research, and then talking a little bit about our remote learning setup. Um, so that's a lot of information, a lot to digest. Feel free to ask any and every question you might have in our Q&A 
down below and our ambassadors on the back end will be happy to answer them. So we'll start with our overview of UC Berkeley, um, and I want to give you a little bit of history. So UC Berkeley was founded in 1868, as we just talked about a little bit over 150 years ago. Um, and we go by a lot of names. UC Berkeley, a lot of people call us Cal, University of California, and this is because we were the first UC campus in the system. There are nine UCs now, uh, but we were the first, so we get to be called University of California or just Cal because uh, we were the first. Our mascot is the golden bear, which is after the California golden bear. And I've recently learned that golden bears are not real bears. They are completely made up. And that's a little bit disappointing to me, but in my heart, we are all real bears. Um, our particular mascot is Oski. Um, he wears a really cool yellow cardigan with cow on it. And he goes around and we see him at uh, like events and stuff. There are lots of pictures with Oski you could take, which is super fun. Um, and yeah, and we also like to say, go Bears. Uh, our campus size, we have about 31,000 undergraduate students and about 11,000 graduate students. And so all in all, 42, 43,000 students walking around campus here at Cal undergraduate and graduate. Um, and we do have quite a few historical landmarks and I'd like to point them out for you in the photos here. Um, in the top left, we have uh, South Hall, which is our oldest building that is still here on campus. Um, it was built in 1873. Um, and it was built with South Hall and North Hall right next to it, but North Hall is no longer standing and is now one of our libraries. So this is South Hall. It is such a beautiful building. It's actually currently being retrofitted so that it's more stable uh, for earthquakes. Um, and but there's a really cute like group of people who like paint South Club period or South Hall periodically, and it's like paint South Hall Club, and you can see them on Sundays, and it's super cute. Um, as we talked about before, we have the Campanile, and there's this beautiful aerial view of it. Um, really a wonderful landmark. One time I was on a plane flying out of Oakland Airport and I could see the Campanile. Um, in the bottom bottom left corner, we have uh, Sproul Hall, which is a historical landmark from the free speech movement, which we were gonna talk a lot about in this presentation. Um, and then in the bottom right, we have Seether Gate, which is comes up in a lot of movies. It's a really nice landmark of our university. Um, you might notice it because the Monsters University Gate was modeled after it. All right, and then we'll just follow up that great overview from Ryan with a few more photos of our campus. Again, you'll see Sather Gate. We love that landmark, really just like the central entrance to our campus, even though we have, since it was established, expanded beyond the boundaries of Sather Gate. And then you'll see that um, in the top right corner, we have the seal. Um, this is our university seal. It was de designed by the jewelers Tiffany and Company as a memorial or thank you to members of our campus community that served in World War II. So out of respect for that, students at Berkeley do not step on the seal. Um, there's three of them around Memorial Glade, which is the central grassy area of our campus. And there's since developed a rumor that if you step on the seal, you will not get a 4.0 while you are at Berkeley. Um, so choose to do with that information what you will. I personally do not step on the seal and many students also um, do not step on the seal. And then in the bottom right corner, you'll see Oski popping up at one of our sporting events at Memorial Stadium. Next, I wanna talk about our campus culture. So Berkeley has a history of being change makers and revolutionaries, and it's deeply rooted in our history as a university. Um, one of the things that was really significant was the free speech movement during the 1960s. Um, and this accompanied the civil rights movement where students wanted to be involved in advocating for theirs and others' civil rights. But at the time, free speech wasn't mandated to be allowed on university campuses. And so UC Berkeley spearheaded the entire free speech movement across the US. And so now because of that, students on college campuses have the freedom of speech to fight for what they believe in. And this is the case on all college campuses because of UC Berkeley. And it's something that we're really proud of. And it's something that we really like to carry with us and continue to fight for ours and other people's civil rights. So here at Berkeley, like I said, free speech is very important to us leadership as well. In general, we just want to challenge the status quo. Um, and we are a developing 
Research and Innovation University. Berkeley is really at the forefront of a lot of innovation in basically all fields. People ask me, they're like, oh, what is UC Berkeley known for? And I'm like, honestly, everything. We're at the forefront of kind of everything. You can like, I'm a biology major and so always in the forefront of my mind is science. We are a top innovator in science, but we're also a top innovator in literally everything else as well. Um, and we also make it a goal to really like foster community here. Um, compassion and passion and social justice are incredibly important to us. Um, and the majority of the things we do also have those values accompanying them. Um, and we are an incredibly spirited and prideful university and we're very proud of that. Um, and we really like to focus on diversity and excellence. Um, and then I do want to look at all these photos here. Uh, so in the top right corner, you have a photo from the free speech movement, um, which again, super rooted in our history. And then I love the parallels here on the slide because you have the Sathergate photo from the free speech movement above. And then right below it, you have our rally committee, which is our spirit club here on campus, who is dedicated to upholding the traditions of UC Berkeley. Um, and I love that the photos parallel each other uh, because they're taken many, many, many years apart, but we're still here at Berkeley fighting for what we believe in and being spirited and passionate. Um, in the bottom left, we have uh, UC Berkeley pride. Those are our wonderful shirts that say fiat love on them, which is a play on words for our fiat lux, which is let there be light. And then the fiat love with the rainbow hearts on it is let there be love. So this is just what we stand for here at UC Berkeley. All right, and then once again, just following up that great history with a few more photos to really show you what Berkeley is all about. So on the left side of your screen, you'll see our steps on Sproul Plaza, actually our Mario Savio steps named after um, one of the leaders of the free speech movement. So you'll see they're used for many different purposes. Um, in the top photo, you'll see a protest taking place. In the bottom photo, you'll see one of our noon rallies that in a typical semester takes place at noon on the Friday before home football games. So you'll see our California marching band, our cheerleaders are out there really just um, hyping everyone up and getting them excited for the game. And then on a different note, the middle two photos, you'll see some more examples of that research and innovation that Ryan talked about taking place on our campus. In the top right, you'll see OSCE, you'll see our rally committee. They tend to pop up a lot, um, which is super exciting to always have that reminder of being proud Golden Bears. And then in the bottom right photo, you'll see our celebration of our Campanile's 100th birthday. We had some aerial dancers from a group from Oakland called Project Bandaloop come dance on the side of the tower. Thanks, Beatrice. That's super exciting. Um, and then UC Berkeley, as always, is just doing the most right now. Um, and especially right now that everything is remote, we're really making a global impact. And right now with the pandemic and everything. So we do a lot of education and outreach in our community. Um, and one of our goals is to make things accessible uh, to everyone. And so we do a lot of like student tech programs and remote youth programs, especially across the Bay Area. Um, and in the top corner, you can see the Girls in Engineering remote camp. Uh, we do a lot of things like that to reach out to communities outside of us and hopefully bring other people into innovation as well. Um, we're also doing a ton of COVID research right now. Um, UC Berkeley's IGI, which is the Integrative Genomics Institute, led by Jennifer Doudna, who is my personal idol. Um, she also invented CRISPR, which is the gene editing technique that exists in the world and almost won a Nobel Prize last year, and we've got our fingers crossed for this year. Um, but so we're doing COVID testing this entire summer. They had a really big study that was nationally funded for students. I was part of it. They tested me all the time. Um, and we're developing, we developed a new test. It's the IGI FAST test. Um, it's still in the works right now, and I'm participating in that study as well. Um, and overall, we are doing a lot in COVID research. Um, and as always, we do advocacy and social justice for human rights and anti-racism campaigns, which is even more significant right now. Um, and we're really trying to fight trauma uh, and burnout because that's what's happening to a lot of people right now. The world has gone online. A lot of things are being required of people just to simply exist. Uh, and UC Berkeley really does a lot to fight that. We have 
we have programs that support students, but we also have programs that support communities and do advocacy and outreach. And we're really trying to change policy here. Yeah, that was great. I'm also participating in that study with the IGI FAST test. And I don't know much about science, obviously. I'm in the social sciences, but I did get my results pretty fast. So I would say they're doing a good job. Next, we're moving into our academics. So we're going to go more in depth on all of our undergraduate colleges in just a minute here. But for now, we'll give you the overview. So we have five undergraduate colleges on our campus our College of Letters and Science, our Rouser College of Natural Resources, the College of Environmental Design, College of Chemistry, and the College of Engineering. When you apply to UC Berkeley, you'll apply to one of these five colleges. Um, and for the, for the College of Letters and Sciences, it's a little more open. You'll actually enter undeclared into that college. However, if you are leaning towards chemistry or engineering, we highly recommend that you apply directly to those colleges because students do enter declared. They have a lot of um, prerequisite classes to take and it's best to get started on those right away. But that isn't to say that if you enter a college and realize that you wanna do something else, you can't transfer out of that college, transfer into another college. And there's also um, a lot of opportunity to take classes in different colleges than the one you're actually studying in. So let's talk about our five colleges. Um, thank you for that introduction, Beatrice. So in our University of California, our first college is the College of Letters and Science, and it is our largest. Um, it is three quarters of the undergraduate population. And you might be thinking, letters and science, that's so broad. It is. It has everything. My major, which is super long, you don't have to remember it, it's molecular and cell biology with a focus in neurobiology. So I just put neurobiology when I talk to people. Um, but that's also in the College of Letters and Sciences. And so it's a biological science, but in the College of Letters and Sciences, um, because it does have the five divisions, arts and humanities, biological sciences, math and physical science, social sciences, and undergraduate studies, super broad. I guarantee that if you're looking for a major, we probably have it in the College of Letters and Science. There are 80 plus majors um, and 16 of our 23 Nobel Prizes have come from the College of Letters and Science. So it's not just the like engineering and chemistry that wins all the Nobel Prizes. Uh, the College of Letters and Science is awesome. Um, it has tons of stuff and I am really thrilled that it's so large and you have that like community with it. And even though I'm a biological science, I'm still in the same college as like all the social sciences. And so we're doing similar things. We have similar requirements and I appreciate that facet of it. Speaking of our social sciences, we do want to thank you for filling out our poll. It's great to see so many people interested in social sciences on here, but also in all the different disciplines. And I see that some of you are interested in environmental sciences, which brings us to our next college, our Rouser College of Natural Resources, which is our college entirely focused on the environment. Some of their programs include programs in biological sciences, nutrition and toxicology, ecosystem management, interdisciplinary studies, social sciences, and even economics and policy. Um, so all of these programs are done with a strong emphasis on sustainability and social justice. Their motto is to see the bigger picture and make a better world. I actually was able to take a class in the Rouser College last spring, and it was just an introductory environmental science course, but we had so many professors come in and give us guest lectures, and they were all specializing in something completely different. And one thing that really stood out to me about this college is that there are so many opportunities for the students to get involved in research. So even though um, these professors were just there for one day. They were encouraging all of us to email them if they ha if we had any interest in their research. So there's definitely a lot of opportunities within this college um, to get involved. Next, we have our College of Environmental Design, which is our smallest college with just about 650 students. There are four majors within this college. We have architecture, landscape architecture, urban studies, and sustainable environmental design. Um, you'll see on the slide pictures of Worcester Hall. So the entire college is actually housed within Worcester Hall. 
which is really great um, for building that community within this college. And actually students within the College of Environmental Design, when they're taking studio classes, get their own space within Worcester Hall that is just theirs to work on their projects. So I have a friend who's an architecture major and is very excited to get to that studio space once our campus is able to be safely open. Another thing we like to point out about this college is that they have their own ambassadors that do a lot of work reaching out to underrepresented communities and getting them involved on our campus community. And then we'll just finish off this college by stating their mission statement, which is to craft ecologically sustainable and resilient, prosperous and fair, healthy and beautiful and beautifully built environments. So lots of great work going on here as well. Next, we have the College of Chemistry. And even though I'm in the College of Letters and Science, this is my favorite college. I love the College of Chemistry and I am doing a chemistry minor. Um, and so the College of Chemistry is our second smallest college and sometimes chemistry and environmental design switch off being the smallest. Um, 5,000 students and it has three majors. You can major in chemistry, chemical engineering, or chemical biology. I have a bunch of friends in the College of Chemistry um, and it is just the, pinnacle of innovation and research here at Berkeley in my eyes. Um, our graduate program is the number one chemistry graduate program in the nation. It is such, such a great college. Um, we have discovered 16 elements here at Cal, you know, periodic table, the elements. Um, we've discovered Berkelium, Californium, Laurentium, Americium, uh, Seaborgium. I can't list them all, but there are a lot, um, 16 of them. And also just to note, anyone know how many elements have been discovered at Stanford? Zero, go bears. Um, and just so much of the foundations of chemistry have come out of this college. Uh, Lewis dot structure was created by the Dean of Chemistry, Mr. Lewis at UC Berkeley. And so anytime when you're in high school and you did Lewis dot structure, that came out of Berkeley. Um, one of our other deans of the College of Chemistry, Glenn T. Seaborg, um, he was responsible for discovering Seaborgium and plutonium. Um, and he, that, well, there's a rumor that he made one of the rooms in the College of Chemistry so radioactive that is currently sealed off and you can't go in it. I worked for a chemistry professor this summer and I asked him about that. He said that's not true, but we can still believe. Um, but anyway, Glenn T. Seaborg, who also won a Nobel Prize, um, he said that his greatest accomplishment, it wasn't any of the elements he discovered, not his Nobel Prize, but the fact that his last name was an anagram of Go Bears. Um, and so his last name is spelled S-E-A-B-O-R-G, which also spells Go Bears if you scramble the letters. So that's why the College of Chemistry is my favorite college. <laughs> And next, we'll just finish off our undergraduate colleges by talking about our College of Engineering, which has about 3,800 students spread across 11 different majors. So they have everything from um, material science and engineering to bioengineering to nuclear engineering. Um, there's even an engineering undeclared option if you know that you want to do engineering, but you don't know exactly what type of engineering you'd like to do. So you do apply directly to this college, as we said before, um, and you also get the opportunity to take humanities and social science sciences breadth classes in addition to your technical courses. So you are getting a little bit of an interdisciplinary experience. If you're interested in engineering, I highly recommend you come on our separate engineering virtual visit, which you can find on our website. You'll get the link to that at the end of this tour. And then the mission statement for this college is to transform the lives of our students by preparing them to become successful leaders and innovators for positive change. Next, we have nine graduate schools here at Berkeley. And the first one I wanna talk about is our Haas School of Business. And I saw in the poll that some people are interested in doing business. So this slide's for you. Um, so the undergraduate program through the Haas School of Business is a degree in business administration or global management, or you can do biology and business or MET, which is an engineering and business program, all super cool. Um, and when you apply to Haas, uh, you, so you apply in your sophomore, at the end of your sophomore year, um, you do your first two years in 
College of Letters and Science undeclared and then apply to Haas. And then when you get in, then you do your degree, your undergraduate degree via the Haas School of Business, even though it's a graduate school. Um, the Global Management Program, uh, we have an option where students go abroad in their first semester here at Cal and they have a group. And so uh, that's one way to go to Haas. And I've known two people who have done it and it is just incredible. They love it. So if that's something that you're interested in and you'd like to go abroad in your first semester, super awesome program. Um, same with biology and business and MET. Those aren't abroad programs, but they are incredible programs where you pair other sciences with business and people love them. Um, we also have graduate schools of education, information. We have our Berkeley Law School, which is ranked top three in the nation. A lot of people ask about an undergraduate law degree. We don't offer undergraduate law degrees, um, but a lot of students might do like public policy or like econ. I apologize, I don't know anything about law, so I'm not sure which majors are appropriate for that. But a lot of students will do like an undergraduate degree, maybe do internships or like jobs at the law school and then go to law school for their law degree. Um, social welfare, optometry, you know, a lot of neurobiology students go on to do optometry. That's not me, but a lot of students do. Um, we have journalism, public health, and public policy. Um, and it's really important to note that a lot of these graduate schools also offer undergraduate degrees. We totally have an undergraduate degree in public health. Um, we have journalism majors, journalism minors. Um, and also a lot of undergraduate departments offer graduate programs. And so even though this is our list of graduate schools, this isn't a full comprehensive list of all the graduate degrees that are offered or all of the undergraduate programs that are offered. Uh, yeah, and in the photos here, oh, sorry, sorry. In the photos here, um, we have our beautiful Haas School of Business on the left. It is such a gorgeous complex of buildings. Um, our undergraduate school, or sorry, our graduate school of information is housed in South Hall. And they kind of played a little joke on us because it's the newest graduate school housed in the oldest building. So that's a little bit fun. And then up in the top is our law school. I apologize, this is my slide as well, completely my bad. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about academics and our structure and class size. So in general, most classes have like a lecture and a discussion. And so the lecture is held with the professor. It's a large quantity of students. Um, but then there are also discussion sections held with a graduate student instructor or GSI. Um, and this is a group of definitely like 20, 30 or fewer. Um, and it's much easier to ask questions with the GSI. Um, and it's just a smaller section like to supplement the lecture material um, and everyone has office hours. You can show up to your professor's office hours, ask them questions, ask them about their research. And you can also do the same with your GSIs, show up to their office hours, ask them questions, ask them about their research. Office hours are fantastic. Um, and in general, I feel like it's a really good system because Having all the students with the professor is a really great, like quick way to get all this knowledge, but also having the discussion sections to supplement the material, take quizzes, do worksheets is really helpful. And your GSIs will save your life. They are amazing. I love them. And professors are all there for you anyway. Like you might, I take gigantic classes. Biological sciences have huge classes. I've taken classes with like, like 700 people. I've taken 700 person lectures, um, but I still feel like it's individualized attention. Like I still feel like I can ask professors questions and I can ask GSI's questions. Um, speaking of which, class sizes, uh, we have an 18 to one student to faculty ratio. However, 85% of classes are fewer than 50 students. And so even though I take a lot that are like 700 people, I have also taken ones like a couple of English classes I've taken are like 25 people. So a lot of them are much smaller. I've even taken like biology classes that are much, much, much smaller. Um, and we also have labs and studios that are that accompany our classes. And so like in my biology classes, I take lecture, I take discussion, and then I have lab. And same with the chemistry and physics. And in it, we do hands on stuff. We are literally doing the mixing chemicals. We are we are using specimens like we've used flies in labs. We interact with plants. We interact with we dissected rats. It's totally, totally hands on. Um, and in general, we have a ton of academic resources. We have our student learning center, which is dedicated to just giving students academic assistance. Um, 
You can do drop-in tutoring. You can schedule a meeting with a tutor. Um, we have individual advising, like I said. I schedule meetings with my advisor all the time. We love our advisors. They are so helpful in like planning your academics, helping you find resources. Uh, and we also have residential student services and student residential student tutoring. And so in your residence halls, you even have tutors. All right, thanks for that great overview of how our classes work, Ryan. And now we'll just talk about like more of specifically in this moment, we are in our current fall semester um, having a remote start and end to our semester. So everything is happening online. Um, we do have some hybridization goals that are in line with CDC guidelines, which means that potentially some classes would happen in person, but we are really um, staying in line with those guidelines to ensure that everyone on our campus is safe and healthy. Um, in terms of academic experience, all UC Berkeley students have access to Zoom Pro accounts for free, which is super helpful. Um, I know that I've used it to have study sessions with people and you don't have to worry about that 40, limit, 40 minute time limit. So that's super nice. Um, we do have options for synchronous and asynchronous learning, which um, is working to accommodate students in different time zones with that asynchronous option. It means that they don't have to be on Zoom at what might be 3 a.m. their time for a lecture. They can just watch it when it's convenient for them. In terms of resources, we have virtual drop-in tutoring. So the Student Learning Center that Ryan just talked about is all online. I get a lot of emails from them because they just know what classes I'm taking. And so they'll send me emails saying, hey, we have a study group for this class because we know you have a quiz coming up. And it's a great reminder that, yes, I should be studying for that quiz. And then in terms of instructional resilience, we have um, developed this semester in the cloud program, which means that um, a lot, I think it's about 30 of our main core classes that a lot of students take have been entirely redesigned um, to work in this virtual setting. So it's been so far a great experience with online learning, um, at least for me. Next, we get to talk about housing and dining. And I also want to share with you that this is my entire world sometimes uh, because I'm an RA, like I said, resident assistant. I live in residence halls. I'm here to support generally freshmen because generally freshmen live in residence halls here at Berkeley. Um, so I'm here to support freshmen in their first year and also just support residents in general because I do have residents that aren't freshmen. So our typical first year housing happens in these sets of dorms. We have units one, two, and three, which are all high rise hallway style residence halls. Um, we have Clark Kerr, which is where I live. Um, it is a little bit farther away and it's kind of its own campus. Um, but it's also a great spot and it has a combination of suite style housing, hallway style housing, and apartments, even though those aren't in use right now due to COVID. Uh, we have Blackwell Hall, which is close to the units and also high rise hallway style. And then we have Stern and Foothill. Foothill is where I lived my freshman year. Um, it is on the top side of campus and it is suite style housing. So instead of a long hallway with one big bathroom, it's like a cluster of rooms sharing a smaller bathroom. Um, and I had a fantastic time. Uh, and then Foothill is, sorry, Stern is a set of buildings kind of spooned by the Foothill buildings. Stern is a hallway style residence hall and it is an all female identifying residence hall. And then, so some details about housing. Um, so uh, like we said, freshmen get priority and this was especially true this year. Uh, freshmen, first year students, and also especially like low income students, people who rely on housing are prioritized this year. Um, when you fill out your housing application, make sure you select any room, any location as a last preference, just to ensure that you get a housing offer. Um, and there are a ton of resources in your residence halls. The first one, your resident assistant, it's me. Um, and all the other resident assistants. We're resources. Uh, we're trained to support you, make sure you're doing well, um, but also we're trained to direct you to other resources. And so when things pop up, if we don't have the answer, we're trained to know where you can probably find the answer. Um, we have theme programs, which a lot of people don't necessarily know about, but they are the best thing to walk the face of this earth. Um, theme programs are themed housing, 
where all the students in a certain residence hall or, a, or not a certain, not a huge residence hall, but all students in a certain like building or area of a residence hall have similar identities or interests. And so the theme programs we have, we have our global environment theme program, we have African American students theme program, we have uh, LGBTQ plus students theme program, that one's called Unity, um, Latinx Hispanic students theme program, uh, women in STEM theme program, that's the one I was in. We had so much fun. It was one of the highlights of my entire life. Um, it was really great. And then, uh, yeah, and so theme programs, I think it's just really amazing to be living with people who you feel like you identify with. Um, and it's just one of my favorite things in the world. And to the end of my days, I will defend theme programs as the most awesome thing ever. Um, we have great security in the residence halls. Uh, we have a three-point security system where you use your ID to scan into the building, you use it again to scan into the stairs, um, and you use your room key to get into your room. Uh, and we have common areas, which aren't in use right now due to COVID, uh, but in general, we really want students to socialize. Uh, and the best part is that a meal plan is included. I have not had to feed myself in three years because I've just lived in residence halls and had a meal plan, and it's fantastic. Um, and again, this is just so that students are well fed, well taken care of in the residence halls. One thing that you might notice if you're applying for housing um, is that we have two meal options. They may have upgraded to three now, but there's a 12 meals a week option. Um, and then I think there's like a 20 a week option. And then there's like an unlimited option. Um, I was on the 12 meals a week my freshman year, and I promise it's plenty. Like 12 meals is actually plenty. For some reason, you probably won't eat breakfast. Um, but yes, so that meal plan was good for you, good for me and is good for a lot of people. But if you do feel like you need one of the larger meal plans, those are available to purchase as well. And then, so like I was talking about a little bit, there have been some adjustments of housing during COVID. Again, priority based on self need. All rooms are single occupancy. So everybody has a single. I'm in my dorm room right now and RAs always have singles, but right now all the residents have singles as well. Um, we wear face coverings in the hallway, in the bathrooms, in any place where we will interact with other students in our residence hall. Free testing, we're being tested twice a week, and this is the case for all UC Berkeley communal housing, and so sororities, fraternities, Greek life is also do, being tested twice a week. Um, other like community living is being tested twice a week. And I went in for my test yesterday and had one on Monday. So it is very intense, but also really, really a good thing that it's happening. Um, self sequestration. Uh, and so this is anytime you leave the Bay Area and you come back, you have to self sequester for two weeks. Please don't see anyone for two weeks. Um, and then we're doing to go meals. You walk in the dining hall, tell them what you want, take your food, and then you eat it to go. Um, and once again, there are lots of resources accompanying this resident assistance. Again, uh, we have students in social pods. Um, and so this is like the group that it's okay to go see. Yeah, go be in their rooms because you're all in the same hallway and it's all good. Um, bear chats, we've been doing them right now. This is where your RA reaches out to you and you check in and stuff. Um, we're having, we're having remote instruction or not remote instruction. We don't instruct anything. There's no learning here. We just have fun. Um, we do remote engagement. And so we have like, uh, we do social hangouts over Zoom. We can hike a little bit because we're social distance. Um, and then we also have isolation housing, which is Foothill right now, um, which you can see in the bottom left picture. Um, and if somebody tests positive for COVID, then they're gonna be moved into Foothill temporarily uh, until they're safe to be reintegrated into the residence hall. This one's still me, sorry about that. Um, so transfer and continuing housing. Uh, like I said, the majority of students living in residence halls are freshmen, but we do offer housing for continuing students. Um, and so there are, you can have campus housing. We also have international house, which is where a lot of international students live. Um, we also have affiliated properties, which are partially owned by the university, partially owned privately. And so Garden Village and Enclave are both residence halls that are on the south side of our campus. Um, Garden Village and Interior is shown in the bottom left image over there. Um, and we also have 
there, you could just live in off-campus apartments that are completely unaffiliated. We also have co-ops, which are cooperative housing. Um, and this is just a group of students living communally. And generally, uh, there are like chores or co-op tasks or like roles that people do inside the house and then the rent is a little bit cheaper. And so maybe someone does all the grocery shopping, maybe someone does all the cooking, maybe someone does the cleaning in the kitchen, stuff like that. Um, and then there's also Greek housing. You could live in your sororities, or your fraternities. I'm not in a sorority, but my two really, really close friends from my freshman year are both in a sorority. So I feel very sorority adjacent and can answer questions about that. And we love meal plans. Even when you live off campus, you can still purchase an additional meal plan. So if you prefer to be fed instead of feed yourself, you can still purchase meal plans. Thank you so much, Ryan, for that great overview of housing. Um, I personally love my experience in the residence halls, but I am doing that option of having an off-campus apartment this year with some of my friends. So that's been really cool just to gain that independence. Next, we'll move into our university health services, which is always super important, but especially important right now in the midst of a global pandemic. Um, so in terms of resources, we have um, urgent care, primary care, and physical therapy all located at our Tang Center, which you can see in the bottom right hand corner. UC Berkeley does require every student to have health insurance, whether that be through our student health insurance plan or you can opt out of that plan and stay on your parents insurance. Um, so that makes sure that these resources are available to everyone. And as Ryan has talked about, we do have extensive COVID testing and tracing as well as great FAQs, webinars, and tips for keeping yourself safe in this time, as well as psychological counseling. Our um, psychological counseling is easily accessible to all students. We do have our optometry eye center. If you need to get an eye exam, that's a great place to do it. And it gives the optometry students um, opportunities to get that hands-on experience as well. We have our path to care center, which works to support um, survivors of sexual harassment and assault. And then in terms of stress relief, we have a few fun activities. We have a club called Pause for Mental Health, which brings dogs onto campus that you can pet on the way to that midterm you were stressed about. And we also have Llama Palooza, which was one of the highlights of my freshman year when they bring llamas onto Memorial Glade for students to take pictures with, as you see in the top right corner. Um, it's very unique to UC Berkeley, and I never thought I would meet a llama in person, but I did. Next, moving on to our campus safety services. So in general, we have our UC Police Department, UCPD, located on our campus. You'll see in the bottom left-hand photo, one of our blue light poles, um, which you can see all throughout our campus. Um, and these allow you to easily call 911 or UCPD, and they'll be there within two minutes, I believe. Um, so it's great to have those around to ensure that you'll feel safe no matter where you are. We also have our Warn Me alert system, which I was signed up for on my first day of orientation. So ever since then, I've been getting alerts whenever there's something, whether that be a power shut off. I heard that um, a few years ago, there was a mountain lion that people got alerts about. So really just making sure students are aware of what's going on in their surroundings. And then our residence hall three point security system to ensure that all residents feel safe as Ryan talked about earlier. We also have some night services. So our night safety shuttle is an extension of our bear transit system, which you can see in the bottom right hand corner. It circulates our campus and then also areas where a lot of students live off campus. All you need is your Berkeley ID to enter the shuttle and it can take you where you need to go. And then we also have bear walk, which is where uniform radio equipped students who have been trained by the UC Police Department can serve as a buddy to walk you home at night. Um, I've heard they make great conversationalists too. To be clear, there was the mountain lion. Uh, just We just got a text about it via the alert system. Um, and I also would like to say that the night safety shuttle is my favorite mode of transportation on the planet. Um, but now let's talk about other student resources because once again, we really do want to service our students here at Cal. Um, we have a lot of student development resources, uh, especially around identity and community, um, all in our Cesar Chavez Student Center, uh, which is 
totally available virtually at the moment, uh, but it also has a great building here on campus. Um, and so we have Centers for Educational Justice and Community Engagement. Um, we have the Associated Students of the University of California, which is the ASUC, which is basically our student government. Um, we have the Transfer Student Center, which is meant to help transfers find community and also resources that might be specific to them. And um, we also have resources for our undocumented students here at Cal because we stand with our undocumented students. Um, and in general, it is really our goal to have just support and equity. We have Disabled Students Program, Basic Needs Center, um, so many other, we have the Gender and Equity Center, which I have interacted with a lot in my time here at Cal, um, Multicultural Community Center, which we call the MCC, um, has resources that are even more specific for students' identities. All in all, tons of resources related to identity and community here at Cal. And next we'll move on to our student life. This is what really makes your college experience super special. We have over a thousand registered student organizations. So there's definitely something for whatever your interest might be. And if there's not, you can make a club pretty easily. We also have a lot of volunteering opportunities, whether that be through your registered student organization or another organization. Campus employment. So Ryan and I are currently working as campus ambassadors, which we like to say is the best job on campus, but you can also work in a library, in a dining hall. There's lots of opportunities for employment. In terms of um, internships, we have some in San Francisco and Silicon Valley. We are very close to both of these areas, which are super um, valuable to our students, especially in more technical fields. And then study abroad, we have our UC study abroad program, which means that you can actually study abroad with students from the eight other undergraduate campuses of the UC. Um, so that's really exciting. Definitely something I hope to take advantage of during my time here at Berkeley. And then we also have Bay Area exploration. As you can see in the top right photo, we do live in an extremely beautiful area. Um, I chose to stay here for college and I still find new places to explore. So lots of um, student life going on. And we're also having a lot of remote resources uh, and we are trying to build community even though we're all online. Um, we have extensive social media networks. So follow us on all of our social media platforms. Um, student groups and clubs have really been adapting well to this. We have like uh, social gatherings, like via clubs, a lot of people are doing like social hours. Um, I've done a bunch of stuff socially online and it's been really fun. Um, but it also is a great opportunity for departments to have even greater reach with their outreach. Um, you can have webinars with professional and personal development opportunities, guest lectures can come in. Um, and so things like that have actually really been blossoming here at Cal. Um, and we're able to reach people who maybe can't necessarily like make it to campus for a talk. Uh, because maybe there are limited seats in this certain lecture hall, but when you're online, you do have a greater reach like that, which is really exciting. Um, Golden Bear Orientation, which is what all the freshmen do when they come to Cal, freshmen and new, ad new admitted students, so that's including transfer students. Um, you have Golden Bear Orientation, uh, it's got advising and it's just preparing and networking you to do well at Cal. Uh, that was all online. My residents have told me that it was pretty successful and they felt like they made friends and enjoyed the community building. So it's we're feeling lucky that this is what's going on right now. I'm personally feeling really lucky and I'm honestly really proud that Cal is my university and I'm proud of how they have dealt with all of this and going online. Um, and visitor and parent services, we have a Bear Talk blog so you can go and read all our blogs written by students. All right, next we'll just quickly talk about athletics, which are unfortunately on hold right now, but we do take great pride in our athletics. You'll see at the bottom of this slide, we've actually won 207 Olympic medals, and we're definitely excited for when the Olympics happen again to um, increase that medal count. On our campus, we have three levels of competition. So we have our division one sports, which you'll be recruited for usually out of high school. We have club sports, which are more comparable to a varsity sport that you play in high school. So you have a tryout and then you'll practice a few times a week and you actually get to travel to play other schools in California. Um, if you're not looking for that level of commitment, you can play intramural or recreational sports as well, which um, is where you just get together with a group of friends and play once a week. We do have our California Memorial Stadium. 
which is where our football team plays, but it is so much more than that as well. We have our Simpson High Performance Center for our athletes, as well as our Athletic Study Center, because academics do always come first, and we really make sure that all of our athletes are supported in their academic endeavors. Haas Pavilion is where women's gymnastics, men's and women's basketball and volleyball is played. It's definitely a super spirited environment um, when those events are taking place. We have our recreational sports facility, which is our main gym on campus. Um, I personally love going there for group exercise classes. My favorite is cardio dance, so I'm definitely excited to get back to that. Yes, Beatrice, cardio dance is the best. Um, so last, I want to talk about library and research. Uh, like I said before, UC Berkeley is a research institution, and we are just at the forefront of everything. Once again, my idol of all time, Jennifer Doudna, is there in the bottom right corner in these photos. Um, but I want to really be clear that research is not just limited to the sciences. Even though I think about that a lot, research is just in everything. Um, there is research in business, economics, social sciences, all of these things. Research is really, really important. I have friends who are doing research in econ. Um, I, we have like behavioral studies and I participate in some of their studies sometimes because they give you little gift cards and because everyone needs study participants. You know, that's how we drive research forward. Um, we have 24 libraries here at Cal and they are all so beautiful and so wonderful and 13 million volumes of books that are accessible to students and even more extensive online library resources, which we use all the time. We have undergraduate research programs, uh, including URAP, Undergrad, the undergraduate research program. Um, but you can also literally just talk to your professor, talk to your GSI, go to their office hours, be like, hey, do you need some undergraduates to do research with you? And that method works for tons of students. So research is overabundant here at Cal. And lastly, we'll just finish off our presentation with some campus highlights. I would say the main highlight of campus for me is our location. As you can see on the slide, we have beautiful views from our campus. We have a great mix of nature and the urban environment. Um, so right, right behind our campus, we have fire trails that is like a super easy access to hiking, but then we are also really embedded within the city of Berkeley. So it's the perfect mix for me. And that's definitely the highlight of campus. All right, we'll be moving on to the Q&A now. So we'll be answering some more questions live. So for our first question, we had from Eden who asked, how big is Greek life on campus? Beatrice, would you like to add on to that? Yeah, I can take this one. I actually just went through the sorority recruitment process this year as a sophomore. Um, and so Greek life, I would say definitely has its presence on campus. And if you do choose to get involved in it, that's a great place to find a community. But there also are a lot of other um, places that you can find your community on campus. As I said, we have over a thousand student organizations. So I personally chose to join Greek Life just because I didn't quite feel like I had found people that I entirely connected with in the activities that I do that I was very excited about. Um, so that's definitely an option that you have and it is a very vibrant community, but it's not I would say, you know, you don't feel like you're missing out if you're not in it as someone who's been on both sides of the equation. All right, cool. Yeah, um, Greek Life at Cal is a great way to get involved on campus, may, meet some new people, but you don't have to join it, of course. There's all sorts of different groups for everyone to join. So yeah, just feel free to look around, see what you like, and eventually you'll find where you're happy. Okay, so for our next question, so... One of our viewers asked, if I applied as a freshman to a certain major, can I change that major through my coursework before school starts if the major I want to switch to is in the same college as the one I applied and got admitted to? Or can I also switch to a different school? Beatrice, would you like to add that one? Yeah, Ryan can also add on, but I'll just answer quickly. Um, if you're in our College of Letters and Sciences, you're actually entering undeclared even though you specify an intended major on your application, which means that there is nothing stopping you from entirely switching your plan in the summer before you come to Berkeley. Um, I came in undeclared and I like 
had a very easy time finding classes that interest me. So I would really just say take what you're interested in, um, even if it might not pertain exactly to a specific major. And Ryan, you can add on. Yeah, totally. Um, exactly. That's completely, completely true. Um, if it's more like bigger changes that require changes on paper, um, you can totally do that. And you should definitely talk to an advisor because the advisors here are really helpful and they have college specific advisors. Um, and so if you are in letters and science, you can go to a letters and science advisor. But if you're in like engineering and you want to switch to a different engineering major, um, just talk to an, uh, talk to an engineering advisor. And over the summer before freshmen start at Cal, you're enrolled in a little online course where it's it's just on Canvas, but it's not like a graded course or anything, but you talk to an advisor and plan out your coursework. And so if you are intending to switch majors, then that's a great time to do that and get connected with your advisor. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Berkeley does provide a lot of support in determining, you know, what exactly you want to major in, what kind of classes you want to take. So also we highly encourage that people take the chance to just explore what they might be interested in. Yeah. Okay. So for our final question, why Berkeley? What made you guys want to come here? Uh, what sort of drew you to Berkeley in a way? What was your Berkeley story? Beatrice, would you like to start us off? Yeah, definitely. So as I said at the beginning of the tour, I'm from Oakland, um, very close to campus. And so I never really considered Berkeley as a school that I would go to. I really thought college had to be a far away experience on the other side of the country for me to really gain the independence that I was looking for in my college experience. However, when the Berkeley admissions letter came out, I will put in that I did tell my mom I'm not going there. And she said, actually, you're going to go on the campus tour because it's too good of an opportunity just to not think about. So I went on the campus tour. I was lucky enough to be able to walk around the campus and really looking at the campus from the perspective of a student, which I had never done before. It had always just been a place for um, entertainment or sporting events. Um, but looking at it from the student perspective made me realize that Berkeley had everything I wanted in a school. So as Ryan talked about, there's so much top research going on in every field, which was really exciting to me as an undeclared student. There's also just so much school spirit. I really wanted that game day um, football experience, even though I don't like football. I wanted that like school spirit that Berkeley um, really has with our rally committee and OSCE showing up everywhere. And um, event so I did decide to choose Berkeley because I realized it had all of these things that I really wanted. Um, and I found that like in doing so, I really just created the distance from home for myself, but really being surrounded by a campus community that is so passionate and motivated about what they're doing made it feel like an entirely different world than the one that I had grown up in. So that's why I've stayed and I'm really happy that my mom forced me to take that campus tour because it really was the best decision for me. Thanks Beatrice, I love that. I honestly had kind of an opposite experience. Um, I'm from Los Angeles and both my parents went to UCLA and I also was admitted to UCLA and I'm a UCLA baby, went to daycare, preschool, summer camp, internships at UCLA my entire life. And so my parents were like, you should go to UCLA, <laughs> especially my dad. He really didn't want me to go that far away from home. He was like, but you could be so close. And I was like, no, I want to go away. Um, and honestly, Berkeley, I, I did not expect to get into Berkeley. I really didn't. Um, and I got into UCLA first and I was like, okay, maybe I'll just go to UCLA. And then I got into Berkeley and it just like sealed the deal for me. And I did go on a campus tour and I did go to Cal Day, which is like our admitted students day. And everything about it makes me happy in every capacity. I love the people here. I love that I feel like I'm being challenged academically and socially. Like um, I feel like I'm learning so much even outside my major, I'm learning how to like be an adult and really like seize opportunities that are given to me. And I love it so much. And I love my classes so much, which is unbelievable because they're really hard, but I love them. Um, I have a midterm later today and I'm literally excited to take my midterm, which is the most ridiculous thing I've ever said out loud. Um, but yeah, that is my Berkeley story. I, I came here and I love the people here. People are just 
open and wonderful and positive and we're not only at the forefront of academics but we're at the forefront of thinking and, and it makes me very very happy to be in this environment and with this atmosphere all right yeah thank you guys for sharing your berkeley stories and i hope that everyone watching will eventually get to tell their own berkeley story at some point so before we officially end off today's tour i just like to give you a couple quick resources for how to stay in touch with us so if you want to contact us then make sure to follow us on social media at visit uc berkeley if you have any more questions then please send an email over to tour at berkeley.edu and a student master will get back to you with an answer to your question in addition if you're interested in hearing any more student perspectives then go ahead and check out the bear talk blog at beartalk.berkeley.edu and if you happen to miss anything like i said in the beginning then different recorded virtual vids are available on our youtube channel at visit uc berkeley also if you're interested in hearing how berkeley is responding to covid19 then go ahead and check out coronavirus.berkeley.edu and as we mentioned earlier in the tour, it is the celebration of a 150 years of women at Cal. So go ahead and check out 150w.berkeley.edu. And also, as I mentioned at the beginning of the tour, uh, there is also a separate admissions presentation. If you're interested in hearing more about how specifically the admissions process works. And finally, if you're interested in hearing more from us, then go ahead and check out the student master panels and engineering visits at visit.berkeley.edu. And with that, thank you for joining us today. And I'd like to invite our other ambassadors to join me in a quick Go Bears on one, two, and three. Go, go Bears. Bears. Thank you guys very much for joining us. Have a great rest of your day.